wishes and thank you for joining us for our annual Festival of Lights and Carols. This event has become a cornerstone tradition at Viterbo University. It is the perfect opportunity for us to thank you for your wonderful support of our students and our mission. Your assistance is critical in providing opportunities for students to achieve our, the holistic educational experience that matters so much to us as we fulfill our mission of preparing students for faithful service and ethical leadership. Your support also helps make Viterbo affordable for families, and eases the burden of our students with financial needs. The Festival of Lights and Carols is designed to celebrate Advent 
as we begin our preparation for the blessed Christmas season. Many members of our community who have joined us in the past years have said that this event marks the start of the holiday season for them. While we can't meet in person this year to celebrate as a community, we wanted to continue our holiday tradition in 2020 by delivering the spirit of Christmas directly to you. So please participate this year as you are able. We typically would be in Marie Angelorum at St. Rose Convent for this event. I ask you to take a moment to center yourself in the image of that beauty, faith, and light as the members of the Viterbo community join me in expressing our gratitude to our founders, the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration. So at this moment, we encourage you to light a candle, to enjoy listening to the beauty of the liturgical readings and the music provided by members of the Viterbo Concert Choir, Rose Corral, and Ninth Street Singers. A special thank you to our students in the choirs and the performance groups and our faculty for finding creative ways to safely bring these performances to you and support us in bringing the beauty of the season through this event. Following the Advent service, we invite you to join members of the Viterbo Platinum Edition Show Choir in a bit of caroling to end the evening, as has been our tradition. I ask you now to relax and enjoy the beautiful sounds of Advent. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light no darkness can extinguish. We praise and thank you, O God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through Christ you are the creator and preserver of the whole world. But above all, you are his God and Father, the giver of the Spirit and ruler of all that is seen and unseen. You made the day for the works of light and the night for the refreshment of our weakness. O loving Lord and source of all that is good, mercifully accept our evening sacrifice of praise. As you have conducted us through the day and brought us to night's beginning, keep us now in Christ, grant us a peaceful evening and a night free from sin, and at the end bring us to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Through him we offer glory, honor, and worship to you in the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Dark clouds cover the world, an Advent prayer for hope. Gathering this year for a festival of lights may be difficult in the middle of a pandemic and with so much misunderstanding and division in our world. However, dispelling clouds of darkness, Pope Francis offers hope with a new letter called Fratelli Tutti, calling humankind to brighter horizons. In opening paragraphs, he writes, For decades, it seemed that the world had learned a lesson from its many wars and disasters and was slowly moving towards various forms of integration. For example, there was the dream of a united Europe capable of acknowledging its shared roots and rejoicing in its rich diversity. 
there was also a growing desire for integration in Latin America, and several steps were taken in this direction. In some countries and regions, attempts at reconciliation and reproachment proved fruitful, while others showed great promise. Our own days, however, seem to be showing signs of a certain regression. Ancient conflicts thought long buried are breaking out anew, while instances of a myopic, extremist, resentful, and aggressive nationalism are on the rise. In some countries, a concept of popular and national unity influenced by various ideologies is creating new forms of selfishness and a loss of the social sense under the guise of defending national interests. This is the path. Goodness, together with love, justice, and solidarity are not achieved once and for all. They have to be realized each day. It is not possible to settle for what was achieved in the past and complacently enjoy it, as if we could somehow disregard the fact that many of our brothers and sisters still endure situations that cry out for our attention. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak loudly to Jerusalem and call out to her. A voice is calling. Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Isaiah chapter 40. Thank you. 
Vision of an Open World, The Incarnation, A Call to Dignity. The bishops of the United States have taught there are fundamental rights that precede any society because they flow from the dignity granted to each person as created by God. This presupposes a different way of understanding relations and exchanges between countries. If every human being possesses an inalienable dignity, if all people are my brothers and sisters, and if the world truly belongs to everyone, then it matters little whether my neighbor was born in my country or elsewhere. My own country also shares responsibility for his or her development, as it can fulfill that responsibility in a variety of ways. It can offer a generous welcome to those in urgent need or work to improve living conditions in their native lands by refusing to exploit their countries or to drain them of natural resources, backing corrupt systems that hinder the dignified development of their peoples. What applies to nations is true for different regions within each country, since there too, great inequalities often exist. Indeed, justice requires recognizing and respecting not only the rights of individuals, but also social rights and the rights of peoples. We can aspire to a world that provides land, housing, and work for all. This is the true path of peace. For a real and lasting peace will only be possible on the basis of a global ethic of solidarity and cooperation in the service of a future shaped by interdependence and shared responsibility in the whole human family. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is he? who has been born King of the Jews. For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. Matthew chapter two.
Sister Thea Bowman, a Christmas light and an open heart to the world. If the conviction that all human beings are brothers and sisters is not to remain an abstract idea, but to find concrete embodiment, then in this festival of lights and carols, let us consider our own Sister Thea Bowman. We unite ourselves with Christ's redemptive work when we reconcile, when we make peace, when we share the good news that God is in our lives, when we reflect to our sisters and brothers God's healing, God's forgiveness, God's unconditional love. Sister Thea Bowman, FSPA, shared these words a few weeks before dying of cancer in her home in Canton, Mississippi in 1990. These were the final public words of a religious woman who dedicated her life to spreading the joy of the gospel and promoting cultural awareness and racial reconciliation. She emphasized that this cultural awareness had as a prerequisite intentional mutuality. She was eager to learn from other cultures, but also wanted to share the abundance of her African-American culture and identity. She became a highly acclaimed evangelizer, teacher, writer, and singer, sharing the joy of the gospel and her rich cultural heritage throughout the nation. Throughout her life, Sister Thea exhibited what Pope Francis would later call a healthy openness to the world in Fratelli Tutti. In fact, a healthy openness never threatens one's own identity. A living culture, enriched by elements from other places, does not import a mere carbon copy of those new elements, but integrates them in its own unique way. The result is a new synthesis that is ultimately beneficial to all, since the original culture itself ends up being nourished. Sister Thea called it a light. I think the difference between me and some people is that I'm content to do my little bit. Sometimes people think they have to do big things in order to make change. But if each one would light one candle, we'd have a tremendous light. The words of Sister Thea Bowman.
Creation rejoices the promise of Christmas. In his letter on the environment, Laudato Si, Pope Francis interjects his connection with his namesake, St. Francis of Assisi. I do not want to write this letter without turning to that attractive and compelling figure whose name I took as my guide and inspiration when I was elected Bishop of Rome. I believe St. Francis is the example par excellence of care for the vulnerable and of an integral ecology lived out joyfully and authentically. He is the patron saint of all who study and work in the era of ecology, and he is also much loved by non-Christians. He was particularly concerned for God's creation and for the poor and the outcast. He loved and he was deeply loved for his joy, his generous self-giving, his open-heartedness. He was a mystic and a pilgrim who lived in simplicity and in wonderful harmony with God, with others, with nature, and with himself. He shows us just how inseparable the bond is between concern for nature, justice for the poor, commitment to society, and interior peace. Moreover, St. Francis helps us to see that an integral ecology calls for openness to categories which transcend the language and mathematics and biology and take us to the heart of what it is to be human. Just as happens when we fall in love with someone, whenever he would gaze at the sun, the moon, or the smallest of animals, he burst into song, drawing all creatures into his praise. He communed with all creation, even preaching to the flowers, inviting them to praise the Lord, just as if they were endowed for a reason. What is more, St. Francis, faithful to scripture, invites us to see nature as a magnificent book in which God speaks to us and grants us a glimpse of his infinite beauty and goodness. Maybe that's why Francis asked that part of the friary garden always be left untouched so that wildflowers and herb could grow there and those who saw them could raise their minds to God, the creator of such beauty whose infinite love sent the supreme apex of all beauty. His son born unto us in a stable in Bethlehem amid the natural setting of his own creation. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and singing, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those of good will. Luke chapter two.
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to their own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields, keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine on you and give you his peace. May the Lord look upon you with tenderness and mercy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
let us now go in light and in peace. Thanks be to God. We hope you enjoyed this special program. May the spirit of the season give you hope, keep you healthy, and bring you great happiness. On behalf of the entire Viterbo University community, I wish you and your family a safe and blessed Christmas.